Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Bambi Salcedo, and I am stepping in on behalf of our chair, uh, Russell Royball. Um, welcome to the Hyde meeting of the year of the California Commission on the State of Hate. Uh, closed caption is available for this meeting. The closed captions can be displayed in English or another language where we'll allow you to view an automated live transcript of the meeting in another language. So this place closed caption um, on your screen, please do the following. Click the button label, show captions at the bottom of your Zoom window, select the bus of the bottom of the window label, enable translation. When you see you enable translation at the top, select English as the speaking language and select your preferred language in the second menu, and then click Save. Automatic captions on your selected language should start appearing in the bottom of the Zoom window. And we will send instructions in Spanish in the chat. Los subtítulos están disponibles para en esta en tener para mostrar subtítulos opcionales en la pantalla. Haga lo siguiente: haga clic por favor donde diga show captions. Mostre los subtítulos en la parte inferior de la ventana del Zoom. Si desea mostrar subtítulos en otro idioma, seleccione la casilla de la parte inferior en la ventana etiquetada Enable Translations. Activar en traducciones y verá una ventana titulada uh, You have enabled translations. Translations. Ha habilitado la traducción en la parte superior. Seleccione inglés como, speak in, uh, como idioma hablado y seleccione su idioma preferido en la ventana. Y haga clic y ya se guarda. Uh, los subtítulos automáticos en el idioma seleccionado deberían comenzar aparte en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom. Uh, ahora vamos a... We're going to establish quorum. So if um, you may, uh, uh, Alec, if you can help us, please do roll call. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, Chair Royball, uh, Vice Chair Salcedo. Present. Commissioner Che. Present. Commissioner Cuellar. Here. Commissioner Damsky. Good morning, I'm here. Commissioner Filer. Here. Commissioner Levin. Present. Commissioner Southers. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you so much. Uh, you may review the agenda by visiting commission's website and click on the bottom label meetings and agendas. We will send the link to the agenda in the chat. So please, if you'd like to review it. Please know that we will be speaking, uh, we will skipping uh, number five, Alec? That's correct. Uh, we will, okay. we will have, we will skip only agenda item, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, we will skip agenda item three, the information three? Okay. on restorative justice. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a presentation for Dr. Levine on hate crime data and 2024 update. Um, uh, do we, uh, we're going to start the portion of a public comment. If you like to move and review the process of this public comment, if you're joining us in Zoom and would like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature to join the public comment queue. If you're joining us by phone, you can raise your hand by pressing nine or start nine and start six to unmute. You may also submit written public comment by email at csh at calcivilrights.ca.gov. If you submit a written comment that pertains to an agenda item, we will read it out loud or summarize it during the public comment portion of the agenda. And before, uh, and before any vote, if the comment is not about a specific agenda item, we will read it out uh, allowed to summarize it during the agenda item titled public comment on items not on agenda. For anyone who's joining us 
in the room in Los Angeles, please raise your hand for a verbal comment and we will unmute the room. You may also submit a written comment by writing your comment on a piece of paper and handling it to the staff uh, and to the staff member in the room today. Um, their name is Narbe. Uh, and in the interest of time, we'll limit verbal comment to three minutes per person. If we can please move to the next item, uh, the approval of minutes. Um, our minutes from our meeting on September 28th and the community forum that took place on September 26, 2024. We will now move into approval of the minutes from the August Commission meeting, which are attached at attachment A, and we will post the link into the chat to download attachment A from the Commission's website. So you can have access to it. Um, is there is there a motion to approve? I move. The, is there a second? I second. Is there any discussion? I have a question, Chair. Um, yes. Are we moving and seconding to approve both sets of minutes at the same time, or are we doing these separately? Um, we, we, I, I believe we're, we're doing one at a time. I'm sorry. Thank you. So we're doing the August commission meeting, uh, and then we'll move into the public comment. So we have a, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion uh, about the approval of the minutes for the August meeting? Uh, okay, I don't see anybody in the discussion. Do we um do we have to do roll or can we just say aye? Alec. Uh Vice Chair Salcedo, we should take public comment before the vote. Oh apologies. We could. Mm -hmm. And then and then we'll do a roll call vote. Okay. Um so are there any public comment about the the agenda? I mean, I'm about the um the past meeting in August, or about the town hall. No public the comment community. via Zoom or email. Okay. I guess we now we can now move into the approval of the minutes. If there's no public comment, um, can we still count the motion that? was submitted and the second? Yes, I think that's Alec? fine. Yes, um, uh, okay. Narbe, do we have any public comment in the room? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to thank the roll you. call vote. Uh, let's start with um, Chair Royball is not here. Vice Chair Salcedo. I am gonna abstain. Okay, uh, Commissioner Che. Aye. Commissioner Quaylar. Aye. Commissioner Damsky? Aye. Commissioner Feiler? Aye. Commissioner Levin? Aye. Commissioner Southers? Aye. Okay, that's six eyes, one abstention. Uh, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, so we are now moving to the September Community Forum. Uh, we will post the link in the chat uh, to download the attachment B from the commission's website. Um, so please um, click on the chat so that you can have access to that. Um, is there any discussion about the community forum that took place in September? Yes. Go ahead. I will make this brief. I just want to congratulate my fellow commissioners uh, Filer and Cuellar and the staff of the Civil Rights Department who did such a beautiful job making sure that victims whose voices are often unheard got a full airing and a heartfelt gratitude as well to Commissioner Andrea Beth Damsky for her courage. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. 
Thank you so much. Is there any other discussion from any of, of the other commissioners? Um, yes, Vice Chair Salcedo, I have a process question. Oh, I'm so sorry, Commissioner Cuellar. Um, uh, I think we established that we don't have to abstain if we were not present. Uh, is that correct? Um, and I think I see Alec nodding his head. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, okay. Well, just to be completely honest, that's the reason why I abstained because I was not present. However, um, I do support the commission efforts. So I'm happy to retract my vote uh, or my abstention if, if that's okay with the group. Um, and then if that's the case, then I just move to say aye. Is that, is that valid, Alec? Uh, this hasn't come up before. I'm not sure. So uh, I, I, I think we're fine. We, we, we have enough votes, but, but I'll look into it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Any other discussion from any of the other commissioners? I just have one thing, um, Vice Chair Salcedo. On page mm -hmm. two of the minutes, um, under where it says welcome, <laughs> Um, my last name was spelled wrong. If somebody can just correct it. Thank you. Of course. Um, if we can uh, please note that even though we're talking about the community forum in September, um, if we can just please go back to the minutes from the August meeting and make that correction, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Any other um discussions or comments from any of the commissioners? Okay, I don't see any. Um, we now move into public comment. Um, Monica, do we have any public comment on Zoom? Or any email public comment? No public comment on Zoom or email. Thank you. Narve, do we have any public comment in the room? Uh, no, no public comment in the room today. Thank you so much. Um, is there any other discussion about this? Um, or should we move into somebody making a motion, please? So moved. Thank you so much. Can we get a second, please? I second. Thank you again so much. Um, Alec, can you please help us with the vote? Yes, uh, Chair Royball, Vice Chair Salcedo. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Che. Aye. Commissioner Quaylar. Aye. Commissioner Damsky. Aye. Commissioner Filer. Aye. Commissioner Levin. Aye. Commissioner Southers. Aye. Okay, that's seven eyes, and um, the minutes are approved. You mean the community forum for September? Yes, the the attachment B, the minutes from the community forum in September are those minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, we now move to uh, agenda item number four, uh, which is um, you know the. The chair and subcommittee's report, I am going to give this report on behalf of our chair, Russell Royball, um, and on behalf of, uh, again, our chair, I would like to take a moment to reflect on the many important events since our last meeting. This month, we honor and remember the contributions of many communities in California and took part in Indigenous People's Day, LGBTQ History Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, Filipino American History Month, and National Disability Employment Awareness Month. I'm happy to announce that Dr. David Kalstein has recently joined the Civil Rights Department as a research data specialist to support the commission. Prior to joining the CRD, he was a research scientist at Stanford University in social psychology. Dave grew up in Montana, has a BA in psychology and sociology from Cornell University and a PhD in social psychology from NYU. Welcome, Dr. Constant. Thank you so much for uh, 
um, being part of our team now, and we're really looking forward to continue to work with you. Thank you. As a reminder, as always, if you feel you are a victim of hate crime or a hate incident, you can contact the California versus Hate Resource Line to report the incident and can be connected with resources. We will send that link in the chat as well for you to have access to it. Monica, if you can please put the link in the chat, it would be appreciated. We also want to remind you about the free services available for communities through the Civil Rights, California Civil Rights Department's Community Conflict Resolution Unit. If your community is experienced hiding in fear, conflict, or tensions because of discriminatory practices, hate incidents, or hate crimes, the Community Conflict Resolution Unit may be able to assist. CCRU offers a range of conflict resolution services to help communities effectively address hate and, discrimin and discrimination-based community conflict. All CCRU services are free, voluntary, and confidential. CCRU services can be requested by completing the request for service form online and emailing it to for the emailing the form to CCRU at calcivilrights.ca.gov. Once again, <clears throat> C excuse me, um, CCRU at calcivilrights.ca.gov. GOV. We will put the contact information for CCRU in the chat. Monica, if you can please also help us with that, would be great. Um, we now move in, uh, into subcommittee on policy recommendations and best practice in other jurisdictions. Commissioner Quayer, please. Good morning, everybody. My apologies, I'm a little under the weather today, so if my voice is a little cracks or if I start coughing. Um, I am giving this um, update on behalf of myself and Commissioner Che, and we sit on the subcommittee for policy recommendations. Um, so right now we um, are actually, we'll be reviewing the memo that was um, put together by our researcher, Halima. Uh, we'll be reviewing that on the October 25th. Um, and that is the memo uh, regarding the barriers that non-governmental organizations face in responding to hate incidents. Um, so after we review that memo, we're hoping that we'll be presenting it to the bigger um, commission uh, meeting. Um, and we are also currently researching um, and researching the existing state trainings and protocols that state employees utilize um, when it, in regard to preventing hate. Um, we will be using that to gather information and make recommendations to the state on um, any new trainings or any possible um, things that um, we find from it. So um, that's that um, update. And thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Cuellar. Um, we now move into the subcommittee on recommendations for law enforcement. Um, Commissioner Dasky, would you please give us a report? Thank you, Chair. Glad to be here this morning. I've been on call for jury duty all week, so every night I find out what I get to do the next day. I kind of described it as winning the reverse lottery. You have not picked today. So um, so I'm glad to be able to give be here today to give this report. After uh, receiving feedback from focus group participants and CRD staff, the California Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training completed the AB 449 training video and uploaded it to YouTube a couple of weeks ago, and we shared the link with all commission members so they may view it. Some of the feedback we provided was incorporated in their final version and some was not. It's a short introductory video about eight minutes long being used uh, during roll call uh, for an introductory training for law enforcement officers. We are surprised that while the subject matter experts in the film are identified by name and all of the members of our focus group, oh, and all of these subject matter, matter experts were members of our focus group, none of the participating organizations were named at the end of the video. There are no credits provided. 
However, we are pleased overall that our commission now has a finished work product, which will be used for training law enforcement personnel about the requirements of AB 449 for report reporting eight incidents that are committed as part of a crime. There are some sections of AB 449's implementation which are subject to adequate funding, and we are reaching out to state offices to uh, gain some clarity about which parts of the bill were funded in this year's budget and which were not. When we prepare our next annual report, we can include this as a work product of the commission with recommendations for adequate funding to enact all parts of the bill. Recent discussions about the bill have focused on tracking training programs that are implemented as required by the bill, and also tracking data of um, reported hate incidents over time. These are discussions that we're having in our subcommittee. Our, commission, our committee has been exploring other relevant issues to continue our work. We're inviting speakers to attend our committee meetings to discuss gaps and overlaps that exist between, I'm sorry. I thought somebody was speaking, that exists between um, tribal and municipal law enforcement and where partnerships between agencies are working well. We are also inviting speakers to inform us about policy recommendations that are important to the transgender community. And we are in the process of scheduling meetings with other organizations and commissions to discuss racial inequities in law enforcement. We're reaching out to human relations commissions and community police oversight boards to gain their insights about law enforcement in protected class communities and to hear how this commission may be useful for improving law enforcement with respect to hate crimes and hate incidents in those communities. In September, I had a meeting with Assembly Member Chris Ward, who represents Assembly District 78 here in San Diego. And um, we discussed some items that have come up in our meetings. I asked him whether there was any state legislation which protects individuals entering houses of worship, healthcare clinics, and schools from harassment by pro protesters. The cities of San Diego and Los Angeles each have these bubble laws, which require protests to keep a distance of 100 feet from healthcare clinics and houses of worship and puts the onus on interaction on the protester. It is their responsibility to ascertain that their interaction is welcome. There is currently not any state legislation pending on this. We discussed uh, the difficulty in reporting hate incidents, which are not connected to crimes, because there are no statutes for prosecuting hate incidents, only for prosecuting crimes. Assemblymember Ward mentioned that he has been supporting nonprofit security grants, that about 3% of these go to Jewish institutions, 1% to LGBTQ plus institutions, and the rest go to nonprofits throughout the state. The amount of the grants awards are not proportional to the number of hate crimes or threats experienced by any of those organizations. The next round of funding grants is currently open for applications. And one of his recommendations to our commission was to analyze the use of these grants for future reg legislation and um, future budget direction. He was, uh, he had introduced Assembly Bill 3024, the Stop Hate Littering Act, which is based on the Ralph Civil Rights Act. The justification for the act is that hate littering is an act of terror, intentionally targeting a protected class. In other words, it is the act itself which is the crime, not the speech. Thus, the act is a workaround for the First Amendment rights to free speech. Enforcement is under the jurisdiction of local prosecutors, and there is a civil penalty up to $25,000 per occurrence. Governor Newsom signed this into law in September. It is now state law. Assemblymember Ward also mentioned that he is the new incoming chair of the California LGBTQ plus legislative, legislative caucus starting in December. And he would love an opportunity to speak to our commission about LGBTQ plus hate crimes and the work of the caucus. We are currently speaking with his office about dates for scheduling this, and it looks like we might have settled on December 9th. And this concludes the report for the Committee on Recommendations for Law Enforcement. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Temsky. Um, 
Can we now move into the subcommittee on community forums? Uh, Commissioner Cuellas, if you also please give us the honor. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will be giving the update on the community forum subcommittee um, for myself and um, Commissioner Filer today. Um, so thank you, everybody. We just finished our third community forum, and that was a huge success. I want to thank all the presenters and everybody who was there. We had so much great, um, a great turnout and a lot of really great comments. And it just was really nice to just kind of get to hear from the public and um, really understand what their concerns were. So again, thank you for everybody who joined. Um, that was in Oakland, um, and that was at the, I believe it was the Oakland Asian Cultural Center. So again, that was our third community forum. So we are working hard on our fourth community forum, which is going to be, we have a date, which is December 4th, um, and it's gonna be three o'clock to 5.30 p.m. It's gonna be held in Fresno at the Fresno Interdenominational Refugee Ministries. Um, also known as FIRM. So th we, this will also be a joint commission, um, a joint um, form, I'm sorry. We are going to be partnering with the Racial Equity Group, I believe, or is that right? Yes, thank you. And um, so this one, this community form is going to be a little different because usually we have presenters, and this time we're going to be actually doing a listening session. So we're going to be breaking out into two, I believe, round two listening sessions, two groups, um, about maybe six group, um, six, six groups with five to ten community members in there, and we'll be asking questions. We're really going to be targeting um, three, um, three ethnic groups, which is the Oaxacan community, the Sheik community, and I believe the Hmong community. Um, so. We are asking commissioners today if there's any questions that they would want us to ask on their behalf um, when we go into these setting into the setting. Again, we have um, until December 4th, so I know that we're working on those questions now. Um, so it's a little bit different than what we usually do. And I know um, we're only asking that two commissioners join because um, we're going to have quite a few other um, groups. Um, um, Filer, Commissioner Filer, is that right? We're going to have about yeah. three other groups, correct? Well, yeah, it's going to be uh, two commissioners from our commission, two from the other, and um, we're going to break up into small groups with one commissioner in each group. And I think that the reason we're limited is because of the Badly, um, Keen, Badly Keen. Badly Keen Act that we can't, unfortunately, have more commissioners in the room um, because we will start out together, break up into the small groups and then come back together. Yeah, thank you for that. And and then, yeah, when we come back together, then we'll kind of do a share back session and um, find out what everybody learned. And then um, we'll close the event off. And then, of course, we will report back to the full commission on what we learned at that community forum. So it's a little different setup. And we're really looking forward to see how this um, this kind of setup will go. Um, we're hoping that we'll get more um, comments and public um, participation. So that's all I have for today. So thank um, you. I'm going to add a little bit. Um, I think um, uh, at this point, Commissioner Quayler, that we we're also looking um, um, and wanting some ideas for next year for the public forums that we're going to do because we're going to have to start scheduling that and looking at speakers. So please let us know if there's particular topics that you think that we um, need to do for next year. Yeah, and thank you for that. And also, you know, again, with the responses that we got at the last community forum, um, we have a lot of people asking for another um, community forum um, really tailored around the disability community again. So um, we're looking at something like that again. But again, please, if you have any um, questions or if anything that you feel that we need to um, address, please do so today. I see Commissioner Chase hand up. Yes, thank you. Well, I want to just thank you, Commissioner Cuellar and, and Filer for all your efforts. Um, I just want to make sure with regard to your question about um, or solicitation of questions for the forum and ideas for future forums. Um, with the Bagley Keen Act, are we 
actually, what, what's the process that we're not in violation of that? Um, and maybe Alec, you're the best person to. I, I actually understand it for this one. The reason we can't do it is we're not, um, you know, typically if you come to one of the public forums, we have it open to public comment. And so, and we have it zoomed. And so in this one that we're doing, we're not going to be having it um, on on Zoom or having a public comment um, period so that we have the small sessions. It's a little more, um, uh, I think, conducive to these communities feeling comfortable to share. As a result of that, we can't have more than maybe two commissioners in a room at the same time. Oh, yes, sense? yes, yes. I totally understand that. I was just um, trying to figure out how do we get you the questions uh, oh. that you were hoping to ask and also ideas for fours in the future. Um, if, is that? I would yeah. think that would probably have to go through Alec just to make sure okay. that we're all, yeah. Being, um, yeah. we're not violating anything. Um, okay. Yeah. But I would think it would go through Alec, correct, Alec? Um, uh, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I, t today would be the right time to, to let us know about your questions. Um, yeah. because if, uh, yeah, it, going through a staff member would essentially still be a violation of essentially uh, into just talking to each other. So, um, just right now. So, yeah. So I guess the question is, so we need to come up with questions or suggestions, um, uh -huh. right now. Yeah. Um, are we able to, I think I need to think about them a little bit more. So can we, um, can we do that at the end of the meeting just so I can, yeah. so we can talk about it? Okay. Yeah. I think, I think Alex, we could do that. If we, if we have to come up with something today, I think that we could give everybody some time and then maybe re um, come back to that at the end of the meeting. Um, Commissioner Levin, I know you have, you've had your hand up. Uh, thank you. Sorry, just more Bagley Keen uh, questions. Um, so is this in lieu of our December meeting? I don't think so. Is it? No, this would happen the week before. We just are, we just got confirmation that uh, the December meeting will take place December 9th. So this will be after the community forum. So that's why I say today is the last day to, to voice your... <laughs> Uh, concerns or questions. And where will the December 9th meeting take place? Remote. Okay. Thank, thank you. So for, for the other commissioners, we will not have to make travel arrangements for a December meeting. That's right. correct. Thank you for clarifying. Um, my other question is, is this particular meeting going to be offered live on the internet? The, the December 9th one. Oh, oh, it's December 9th. Yes. I'm sorry, strike, strike that. I'm sorry. The, the December 4th one in Fresno. Um, the forum. I don't think we're going to do that in terms of wanting to make it uh, more conducive to people feeling safer to share. That's part, if I'm correct, Alec, that's part of why um, we're restricted with the number of commissioners that can come. But we will do a full report afterwards on the 9th. Thank you. No further questions. Yeah, and I I I, I assume because there's going to be several groups, um, it would be really hard to capture it, every single group as well. Right, right. Um, and I think that's all I have to say on our um, update. But again, um, you guys can think about any type of questions that you'd like us to ask these particular groups, um, please um, do so. And then we'll revisit it at the end of the meeting today. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I guess I would like to propose before we move into um, into public comment and, and discussion, um, can we put you know this particular item at the end of the presentations and everything so that we can give enough time for people to present and cover all the items that we need to cover in this agenda. Alec, is that, yes, is we that can okay? Or? Yeah. Well, we can just revisit the agenda item at the end. 
Okay, great. I'm Thanks. Sure. Okay, so we now um move into discussion from commissioners. Or uh, it's anyone have a question or want to have a discussion about any of the presentations from the subcommittees? Okay, I don't see any hands up. And so Others, I, I think um, Commissioner Oh, Southern. sorry. Did I? Okay. Thank you, Chair Salcedo. Uh, I just want to again commend Commissioner Damsky on her leadership of the Recommendation for Law Enforcement Committee. The video is outstanding. Um, I'm looking forward to, although the agencies weren't recognized in the credits, we'll make sure that at least one agency, all those officers will see that video. And we'll make sure that we push that um, across the state. Uh, I just think it was very well done. Um, we do have more work to do with other representative groups that are being targeted. And we'll do that work. But again, thank you for your leadership and following this through. It was challenging, but I think the product speaks for itself and very proud of your work in that regard. Thank you, Commissioner Southers. Thank you so much. Any other discussion points or um, questions related to any of the subcommission reports? Okay. I don't see none. Um, if so, now we move into public comment. Um, Monica, do we have any public comment on Zoom or any email? Yeah. Public comment? We have okay. one comment from Greg this year. Um, Greg, I allowed you to speak. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, first of all, thank you to. Uh, uh, those who put together the uh, the, the uh, forum, uh, it was, um, and I, I understand you're considering a second one on disabilities, which which I think would be be excellent. There we would have. Um, I know there were people who wanted to speak who, because of the short notice, couldn't couldn't, and uh, I'm sure would appreciate a second forum. Uh, as to the. Um, uh, law enforcement uh, issue. Um, we just found out Thursday from the Department of Justice that the, um, the uh, as you brought up, there had been a question of whether they could fully implement AB 449 due to lack of funding. Uh, the department has has uh, a rearranged funding so that yes, they can fully implement it, which means that uh, all all law enforcement agencies will be required to submit their hate crime uh, policies to DOJ for uh, compliance uh, checking. Um, and the, the first round of those will be January 1st. And DOJ will do actually do the checking to um, and will instruct the, any agency that doesn't submit or that submits a non-compliant policy will have to um, be instructed to uh, submit a compliant policy. Uh, thank you for all your work. Thank you so much for um, for that. Um, any other public comment, Monica? Yeah, we have, yes, okay. we have Sonia Rosas. Thank you. All right. Sonia, you should, there you go. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to see if we can get a copy of the subcommittee recommendations for law enforcement. Oh my God. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was yes. just curious, I was just curious about that. Like um if I can get like a a, a document or a listing. I believe the um the reports uh are posted on, on the website. Am I correct, Alec? Yes, Sonia, we'll post a recording of this meeting to uh, the commission's website. Is, is that sufficient? Let me check the website. Is it on the um, link? Yeah, Monica, yeah. Monica, if you can help us put once again the, the um, Civil Rights Department's website and maybe where people can actually access the documents, the agenda, 
the minutes and everything else related to this commission would be great so that um so that anyone and everyone has access to it. Really appreciate it. And please let us know if you need uh, additional support to have access to those documents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other um, public comment or any email public comment, Monica? Uh, no public comment via email or on Zoom. Okay. Um, So, uh, Narvai, do we have any public comment in the in the room? Uh, no, <clears throat> no public comment in the LA room. Thank you so much. Um, so we now move into the presentation from Dr. Levine on uh twenty twenty three hate crime and data, and. Yes, is that is our next item? That's correct. Okay. Um, you ready, Dr. Levine? Y yes. Uh, th thank you. Can we have someone uh control it from uh, California? And 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 if I may, we missed you and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm uh, transitioning back in slowly, but I appreciate it. And thank you so much for holding it down for for me and supporting Maria and the meetings and, and everybody else. So thank you. Thank you again so much. Uh, so thank now I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Levine. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And just let, let me just pre preface just uh, uh, having a partner who uh, is a doctor and a dad who's a doctor. I'm just a lowly JD. So, uh, uh, and, and, and a wonderful support staff that are all PhDs. So I don't wanna be caught in the imposter zone, but, uh, but, but, but thank you in that regard. I also wanted to say, um, especially because you're here, just as a, a brief preface, one third of the election spending uh, on one side, was directed towards maligning our transgender brothers and sisters, $21 million. And we're seeing things reflected in polling where 51% of Americans have uh, said that they have moral issues with regard to uh, our transgender brothers and sisters. Um, it's an affront to dignity and you'll see why when we see how this translates into increases and correlates uh, to increases in various hate crimes. So anyway, uh, but, but it's so important because it is key. And one of the beautiful things about this commission, and I have such heartfelt admiration for, for this wonderful staff and for my fellow commissioners in standing together as allies in this respect. Thank you. Let me just... Uh, uh, let me just uh, go straight to the uh, presentation then. If someone has it loaded up, we'll, we'll just go to the title page. And can, you see, someone... can you see it? Can you I see cannot. The presentation? But, but if, if it's up, we got the title page. Great. Uh, let's move on to the second page then. So here's the big headline. Um, but it, it, this is very important. Overall hate crime according reported hate crime. And we know uh, that there is significant underreporting. And what I found in my independent research is we have vast informational deserts with respect to geography, as well as uh, bias category. So we really have to know that those limitations are there. But here we go. If you look, uh, you could, I, I don't have to go over it all. Uh, about 53% race and ethnicity, 22.5% uh, religion, 18.5% sexual orientation, and we can we can see the, uh, uh, the, the rest up there as well. On the side there, you can see we had a record. 
But because of some difficulties in various jurisdictions, including here in California, it really has torpedoed uh, the, uh, the actual outcomes uh, that, that are expected. And here's what I mean. Um, and by the way, I, I want to be careful here. I am not maligning anyone. We are seeing this across the country. But in particular in, uh, in Los Angeles, um, where there is a change going on to a new data collection platform, but as, as well as other cities, we, we saw differentials between preliminary numbers and final numbers that cannot just simply be explained by the usual filtering that takes place. By the way, I also found that with respect to the state of Georgia. Um, but because uh, LA uh, is the second or first, depending on the year, highest reporting agency in the nation, what this incomplete merger has done has artificially depressed the increase that we would have seen. So that's where that arrow, we would have seen over 12,000. Why? Because almost half of the victims that are in the preliminary data in Los Angeles have not shown up successfully merged into the new data platform. And for every 110, we had about 400, for every 110, that's a 1% percentage nationally. So we, so just bear with me, we would have had double the percentage increase had that been counted. By the way, similar, but smaller with respect to like San Jose, uh, for instance. So when the attorney general's report, and by the way, I wanna be careful here. This attorney general has done fora throughout the state in, in major cities. Um, so this is really something that is, is uh, an issue nationally as well. And we've seen this happen over the last couple of years. And then the FBI does a supplement later. But what has happened is the, the initial headline is the one that, that is anchored in the public mind uh, and in the newspapers. And, and the revisions uh, don't really show up. We, and, and we saw it to the extent that when I was at the White House a couple of years ago, even the White House was using the old incorrect data and not the newer supplemental data even folks in Congress. So there really are uh, issues with respect to this. And in particular, how does it work with regard to public policy? Uh, we have to make sure federally that our California versus hate number, uh, phone number and other uh, policies related to it that Becky did, uh, Becky Monroe did such a wonderful job along with others um, is, is funded again. So when, when, when folks go to Washington and we see a 7.1% decline that is not actually true, in other words, we should be having uh, an increase over uh, uh, 2022, not a decrease. And, and I've even sent an email to our, our, our friends at the Public Policy Institute of California who, who did a uh, you know, preliminary, preliminary analysis rather uh, of, of, of that, that, that new information. By the way, the FBI, I believe upon my recommendation, put together a smaller cadre of high reporting agencies, and that showed a decline. Had LA's numbers that, that we had, at least in the preliminary, even with the usual filtering that takes place, LA would have shown a record, and that would have then translated into increases because of the, the importance of LA, uh, uh, into the national numbers. But it, it's not just LA alone, but LA is the, 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 uh, uh, the biggest uh, entity and highest reporting agency in that regard. Uh, generally the highest reporting, at least in the last couple of years, highest reporting agency in the country along with New York. Anyway, we could just go uh, to the next one because it's really important because victims' voices must be heard and this affects policy. Right when, when when we go and say, look, we've had success with California versus hate. We want to make sure that, that the actual uh, best numbers and trends uh, that we can get in there. Let's go to the next one. Uh, uh, next slide. Uh, and, and again, uh, what this shows uh, uh, in 2023, uh, we had over 16,000 agencies participate. Um, 
which is a multi-year high. Uh, we had a big decline over the last five years. So this is positive news. On the bad side, almost all of those agencies reported zero, right? So we go from not handing in your homework to just putting a check that says we had zero. So uh, we, we do have to improve with respect to that. And the channel checks that I've been doing so far are showing increases again in at least in the limited number, of, but of highest reporting cities such as New York and Chicago, for instance. So 2024, if these preliminary numbers hold up, should unfortunately again uh, reflect that election years uh, are, are bad. And it's not just for hate crime. I cannot list now because of the lack of time. All the NGOs and research institutions, which are sending out warnings uh, with respect to related targeted violence around the elections. And we see many election entities uh, uh, heightening uh, their security. Uh, so really important stuff. Let's go to the next slide real quick. Thank you. Um, Anti-Jewish hate crimes, according to the FBI, were up 63%, reflecting the record that I had stated previously in the year. Uh, my research showed an increase of 48%. Uh, and in the top 10 cities uh, where, where Jewish folks are, are, are much more common, in the 21 largest metro areas, Jewish folks are twice as represented as in the nation as a whole. So, But what we're seeing is double-digit increases again uh, and it looks like 2024, at least in New York and Chicago, looks like record years in some other cities as well. So if we could go to the to the next slide, I just don't want to take too long. People have been so kind. Um, uh, we also saw uh, in, in, in our multi-city survey, 51% increase. In 2023, FBI showed the highest number of anti-Muslim hate crimes since 2017. So again, for, for Jews, record uh, for anti-Muslim during that terrible time in the middle of the decade that started uh, with, with uh, uh, terrible stereotypes against our Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, as well as the proposal of Muslim bans. Uh, horrible. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Anti-Arab hate crime, similar uh, the highest, at least since they were re-entered as a single entity uh, in, in the middle part of last decade. Um, and the reason why, we don't really have the time, but uh, they initially were counted, then they weren't, but it appears that the 2001 period for both our Muslim and Arab brothers and sisters was the highest, but we're, we're hitting alarming increases uh, and, and, and we must do more. Uh, so that was the highest since the reclassification. Um, racial hate crimes, anti-Latino hate crimes, which we know also a lot of racial hate crimes, massive underreporting. So that's why I put both African-American and anti-Latino. And what I think is so interesting though, follow that chart. So up in 2020, we saw a real big increase uh, that, that, that broke a, a, a multi-decade trend. We've been hanging out high at that level. Why? The George Floyd protests. But when, when that ca uh, came off the, uh, the news, uh, and who's being targeted? Uh, Latinos and immigrants. And it's, uh, how horrible, how horrible. And we know from prior research, uh, certainly it was, uh, of mine, and I believe of other folks as, too, uh, as well, that there's correlations be, behind tri, high transmitters. And we're now in that period now, hey, like, let, let's, let's look at Springfield, Ohio. I, I think about four or five hate crimes for all of the previous year. In one month in October, three dozen bomb threats alone. And if we go, could go to the next slide. Anti-Asian hate crimes. This is, and we discussed this when I was at the White House early in the year. We know that among all the, the, the biased categories and groups out there, we have severe underreporting. And that's why, uh, thank you, Commissioner Che, for all your work 
that you've done in, in this respect. Even with these declines, third worst year, third worst year uh, uh, with regard to um, AAPI uh, as well as Hawaiian and Pacific uh, Islanders. I'm sorry. Uh, as, as, I'm sorry. With regard to AAPI. All right. Um, terrible. Let's go to the next slide. Disability hate crimes. Look at that. Both physical and mental disabilities, we're looking at records. Some of this is reporting effect. Of course, this doesn't even come close. So the, look at trends, not numbers. Um, this is an outrage. And as someone who has family, multiple family members who are disabled, what a terrible thing that these families have to experience. And thank you so much to my dear colleagues for, for highlighting this at that marvelous forum that, that you did, it, it, uh, that I had the privilege of attending in Oakland. Uh, let's look at what else. Anti-transgender in the bottom uh, and anti-gay male on top. So in other words, what we see is kind of this interesting dance when groups are targeted. Uh, adjacent groups go up, they sometimes plateau, plateau, but then another group that is considered similar gets attacked more. Now, um, unfortunately, and I apologize, I uh, having left the country, I, I had um, Native American as well. We are having some erratic behavior with regard to the numbers, which seems to me to suggest that uh, we need to do more. And it's outside of what we're usually seeing. And I will make sure that in subsequent uh, meetings uh, that, that we address that as well. Uh, we don't have to, to go to all the slides, but even anti-white hate crimes, uh, which uh, peaked around 2022, uh, had a decline, uh, but are still up higher uh, than, than prior years. And what we're seeing right now is a perfect storm where we not only have the usual hate mongers online, we are now seeing interference from, from foreign countries. We're also seeing the, the trust and, uh, and security programs at major social media companies uh, being eviscerated at the time where we need them the most. And a lot of these conspiracy theories get tied to, get tied to particular groups uh, that are listed here and ones that we care very much about. So I'm, I'm going to uh, conclude my presentation, but I want to make sure that I thank my fellow commissioners uh, for this opportunity, because this kind of surveillance uh, is important, both uh, as, as far to real time as we can get, but also with regard to accuracy, as we often see these numbers supplemented and revised later. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, this morning. Thank you so much, Commissioner Levine. I see uh, Commissioner Che, uh, hand, please. Yes, thank you so much. Um... Well, thank you, Commissioner Levin. Um, I think the your updates are really important, and I especially appreciate your comment about looking at trends, not numbers. Um, I think it's it's incredibly important, um, and the vast data deserts that we still have, even with these numbers. I had somewhat two technical questions. Um, one was, I saw that the data um, really covers from 1997 to 2023. Is that actually when uh, the FBI started sharing these reports on hate crimes? Uh, so that's one. And then secondly, the problem with um, capturing the data, the data collection issues that you raise, is that coming from the FBI? Uh, or is that something uh, specific to the states and how they're collecting information? So where is the problem stemming from? Sure. Let me answer the, the uh, first question first. Okay. Um, I believe that uh, most of these charts show going back to 1991. 
1991, sorry. Mm -hmm. Right, which, which is uh, when we first started national data collection uh, from the FBI. The year before, though, we did have a preliminary report uh, from another branch of the federal government in 1990, but it didn't uh, comprise, it comprised about 10 or 12 states. 1991 should be taken, though, with a grain of salt because we had, it was the kind of the, the preseason startup year, uh, and we had a lower number of agencies, uh, a, a significantly lower number of agencies reporting. But again, 92 uh, election year and also the civil disorder uh, in, in Los Angeles. So, mm -hmm. uh, 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 thank you for that question. I, 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 I um, with regard to no, I don't. I don't think it, the FBI has spent a lot of money and and put in a lot of resources. I think there there are, are a few issues. One is this continuing issue with regard to the uh, merge to the NIBRIS National Incident Base reporting system, which will give us an array of data that we did not have before, but. The computer systems for these agencies can't be antiquated. In other words, you just can't send it in, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, with a scantron. Uh, so, so that that's one thing. So, part of this problem is not out in the field, but once we get reports in, getting those reports into the new data system, and the FBI is making an assiduous effort. Uh, secondarily, we have issues with regard to victim reporting. Our friends at the Williams Institute has found that in states where there's, for instance, anti-LGBTQ uh, political initiatives, uh, the, resp uh, 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 the responses uh, to this community and the prejudice to this community uh, has ac accelerated. Uh, so so th that's a real issue. And, and the other thing too that I think is important to recognize is that when we see conflicts overseas, it really translates uh, into spikes here. And what I am concerned about is now what we're seeing is fire season all year long. So even when we have declines, um, in fact, with respect to the Asian American community, for instance, in 2020, uh, sp spiked during the beginning of COVID and then with the pile on by politicians saying terrible things. Then we saw a slight decline, but boom, uh, in, in January, a big increase when when the rhetoric and the that and the debate about vaccines occurred again, and that spike was even bigger. Um, and one of the things from your uh, research that was to show you just how, how terrible this is, you had double the you you counted many things, but just the assaults alone that you counted were double than what we saw in the in the uh, in the FBI reports. So we are seeing conflicts all around the world. Terror attack in Turkey today. North Korea uh, having troops getting trained in Russia, uh, for instance. Issues with regard to Xi Jinping uh, giving a speech last week uh, talking about an escalation with regard to uh, Taiwan. So in other words, we we really have a, a cauldron of conflicts around the world, not to mention the Middle East. Um, and uh, so we, we what we're seeing now is really a a a multi pronged type of possible and existing victimizations. In other words, uh, give me an example. December twenty fifteen, uh, after the San Bernardino terror attack and the previous month's uh, Paris terror attack, we we saw the third worst month for anti Muslim hate crime at a time when overall hate crimes went down. Now we're seeing multiple groups go up uh, at once. And I think a large part of this is due to the terrible, terrible mainstreaming of replacement theory, uh, replacement doctrine, uh, white supremacy, as well as other types of prejudice uh, as, as well. So we are, are when, when we go to these meetings, for instance, with the leadership conference or in the research community, the, the type of concern about this perfect storm risk, and again, look, Maybe, maybe things won't happen. But I can tell you, for instance, 2016, the day after election day, was the worst day for hate crime overall uh, in 13 years. And immigrants were among the most targeted. Where are we today?
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions um, or comments from any of the commissioners? I don't see any. Um, do we have any um, uh, public comment, Monica? Uh, yes, we have one from Greg Desjere. Uh Greg, I've unmuted you. Thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Norman, thank you. Um, you mentioned uh, geographic uh, deserts of reporting. I, I presume, tell me if I'm, yeah, that's right, that, that that correlates with uh, individual agencies reporting nothing. Is that correct? Not only individual agencies reporting nothing, but bigger agencies like the River, Riverside County Sheriff's Office, 10th largest agency in the country, reports two to four hate crimes a year. L.A. Sheriff's Office, uh, oftentimes under 30, and they cover a, a jurisdiction that has more people and a greater geographic spread than LAPD. We, we often see sheriff's departments uh, and particularly agencies, that uh, larger agencies that don't have a hate crime unit, having rather minimal reporting. So, for instance, Tampa reporting three in a given year, or Miami last decade, eight out of the 10 years, zero. Um, the South, big problems. And as we see populations, for instance, um, Asian populations, Latino populations, spreading into areas where they were not as represented before. These geographic deserts also become uh, group deserts, if you will. So for instance, in the South, where we have states that have the highest percentage of African-Americans, we often see, not in every state, but in many, most of them, rather minimal reporting. So um, it, it's, it's very sad. And, and that is why uh, I want to thank my fellow commissioners. And I also want to thank kind of the uh, the 10th th Beatle here, Greg Desjere, who without your friendship and without your ability to be the Pied Piper of vast, uh, uh, broad communities to make this commission possible, Greg, my heartfelt thank you to you and, and your participation in these meetings. And thank you for your continued assistance with regard to this. By the way, it uh, looks like Congressman Byers from Virginia is going to hopefully, uh, and many of the many of the, the organizations, certainly including my old organization when I was there, and, and Southern Poverty Loss and among others, leadership conference, are looking to have the kind of mandatory uh, response uh, become a, na a national one. In, in California, though, we're really hung up uh, not only by lack of participation by some agencies, but in those agencies that are doing a great job. LAPD so solves so many of these relative to other agencies that their their biggest issue is, you know, the computer issue. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's something. But even with all those speed bumps and obstacles, we are seeing records and we have to make sure that that guides public policy, and it also makes sure that victim communities know that we hear their voices. So thank you so much to my fellow commissioners and, and the 10th Beatle, Greg Desjere. Thank you so much. Um, do we have any other public comment, Monica? Yeah, um, Naomi Murakawa. Uh, Naomi, I just um, unmuted you. Um, thank you for that wonderful presentation of really disheartening data. Um, Professor Levin, if I understand you right, it seems like you are pointing to some deep underlying causes that are driving uh, hate crimes against a number of communities. I'm curious what kind of um, leeway and power the commission has to actually address some of these high level macro drivers in, instead of, or perhaps in addition to attending to the offenses on the ground, so to speak, 
when it sounds like from your presentation, perhaps some of the larger concerns um, pertain to electioneering talk, what has become normal politics, um, a normal and apparently legal trend of attacking trans children, and then we end up criminalizing uh, people with far less political power who are sort of implementing the whims and bigotry of political elites. So I'm just curious how you reconcile um, the tools of the commission uh, with the analysis that Professor Levin has actually provided. Thank you. Well, I think we do several things. Uh, I, I, I would hope that we look to community resilience. I think it's important to take the research that we know. We can take day by day ticks. Remember when the statement during the George Floyd protest, when the looting starts, the shooting starts? That was one of the five worst days or six worst days for anti-Black hate crime for as long as we've been keeping data. Keeping data. Um, we have a lack of leadership in the political realm. We're now to, to uh, get some kind of political leverage. It's okay to attack transgender children? where it's okay to attract homeless who we don't even count. We just had a homeless murder the other day. In fact, for the first uh, 15 years of this past decade, there were more homeless people murdered uh, in what appeared to be hate prejudice type crimes. In other words, not pecuniary uh, uh, benefit, uh, not uh, crimes gone bad or drug deals or things like that just people going out and hunting down homeless people, oftentimes done by children. So there was a, a, a movie, Bum Fights, and then we, we saw increases in these homicides. And when we saw, for instance, Tucker Carlson target transgender people, we now saw $21 million this month being directed towards excuse me, objectifying our transgender brothers and sisters. One third of the presidential ads last month targeted the transgender community. And we saw in prior years when Tucker Carlson uh, went on his air with horrible, horrible memes and images. So it's not just high transmitters. And we've seen this with regard to what happened in Springfield. In other words, it doesn't matter whether it's true. It matters the spread of it. And uh, and what I'm saying to you is it's much worse now. And we're losing not only the guardrails with regard to decency. If you look back at the Republican Party, President Bush 41, John McCain, folks who, who I profoundly disagreed with on many things, they spoke out against prejudice. We now are in an era where, pol where political invective has improperly targeted the most vulnerable folks in our society. And that's something I know from my, my center's work because we don't embrace one group, my old center that is, we, embrace, we had a, a policy of who's getting hit the most, who's having the biggest increase, and who asks us for help, who has the least resources. And it's now all hands on deck. In other words, it's not just one group or an adjacent group. Um, uh, it's 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 um, a cycle, and 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 especially and by the way, the one thing that the researchers will tell you among the cores of this is also misogyny. So in other words, to to show your one's machismo and and power is not the leadership of being an ally. And if I could compliment my my my, my dear friend, Chair Roybell, um, that kind of leadership, we're seeing a vacuum of leadership where basically schoolyard bullying has become an international political tool, which is now causing targeted violence to increase virtually across the board and then boil over into everyone from public health officials, school board folks, and election workers. And we saw it in some of the public comments with regard to folks saying critical race theory is taught in school, in grade schools and high schools. 
when it's not. And you know how I know that? Because when I was at Stanford, I knew the folks who first came up with critical race theory. So um, it, it, we have degraded as a society. And one of the things that I would like to see, and I, I am so glad that Commissioner Damsky brought this up, is during the next year, when we have political leaders who are uh, uh, putting forth legislation that is either directly or even tangentially related to this topic, for instance, hate crime directly, hate littering, or, or, or things we're going to do with regard to alternative sentencing, but also uh, issues relating to, for, for instance, gun violence. Um, I, would, I would like to see us all come into agreement where we could invite these legislators when they have proposals to come here uh, and tell us what they are. I know we have issues with regard to when we can recommend policies, but nevertheless, we can allow people to use our fora as a safe place to present. Why? Because the legislative docket is so filled, particularly when there's economic issues, that we can now become a secondary area uh, for this kind of uh, presentation. And another quick thing, as this is degraded nationally, what we saw when we had Wadia El Fayumi's family in the audience, my dear friend, Maya Berry, who I would love to have come here, uh, with the Arab American Institute, get accused by S Senator Kennedy from Louisiana of supporting Hamas and Hezbollah when she does not. Yet that was the focus. So what, what I'm, unfortunately, as this degree, and we don't know how elections are going to go. One of the reasons why I wanted to have this commission was to be a backstop when other places fail either locally or federally. And unfortunately, we're in that time now. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Levin. Um, any other public comment or written comment, Monica? Um, yeah, it looks like we've had a comment from Greg Dejere. Let me unmute him. Greg, I've unmuted you. Uh, th thank you, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll say everything I have to say, right? right now, so uh, don't get uh, you cut off again. Um, but thank you, thank you, Brian. As usual, you give yourself too little credit and me and everybody else too much. And you're the, you're the one who was mostly responsible for creating this, this commission. Um, you, the um, uh, deserts you mentioned in here in California, are they the same agencies over and over year after year that report zero or, or near zero? Uh, hate crimes, and uh, if if so, um, comment is is one lack of reporting doesn't just mean lack of data; it means lack of law enforcement. And the other is that um, hopefully uh, AB four four nine will have some effect on that. That every law enforcement agency will have to have a pretty good law enforcement uh, hate crimes policy to guide officers. And the question is how how closely they will follow that that policy and i will have something to say about that at the end and under public comment short answer yes anaheim minimal 10th largest city uh in in the state uh riverside county shield i know i you know i'm not trying to there there are many northern part of this the extreme northern part of the state absolutely um but also the la county sheriffs <laughs> You know, six million people. I mean, they're probably like one of the uh, the largest agencies in the country. Um, yet we're we're getting like less than thirty a year. <laughs> when we're when San Bernardino is counting like five, and uh, they have two hundred and change thousand people. So it it it, 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 give, it gives you an idea. But yes, we're we're consistent. We're seeing consistently many of the same agencies failing to uh, reflect the numbers uh, that, that others have seen. And, and perhaps in a subsequent meeting, just because you know, uh, time is an issue, uh, one of the things I did was look at per capita. And it does vary not only here in the state, uh, but, but across the country. Larger cities with hate crime units generally uh, do a pretty good job. Thank you. Anybody else, uh, Monica? 
on Zoom or written public comment? Uh, no public comment via Zoom or email. Thank you so much. Uh, Narvai, uh, do we have any public comment in the room? Uh, no, no public comment. Thank you so much. Um, before we move into the next agenda item, I do want to uh, say thank you um, so much, Commissioner Levine, for for highlighting a real issue um, as it pertains to the livelihood of trans, gender, non-conforming, and intersex people who live in this country. Um, you're right. Because of our community are being used as political pawns, unfortunately, the attacks and the violence that um, the hate violence that we continue to experience to be continue to be rampant. And I, I think we definitely need to look at that. We need to think of ways on how we are going to support and uplift the livelihood of transgender and government sex people um, and really find ways to uh, to protect us, right? Um, I think it's important to also recognize that we as a community in comparison to the broader population, we are a minute community and um, essentially, you know, uh, essentially what they're trying to do is to extinct who we are as people and they're trying to extend our existence from this world. Um, and so there's a lot of work that needs to happen. Um, there's a lot of investments that need to happen uh, to really eradicate the hate that all of our communities experience. But I think we need to uh, continue to pay attention about you know this particular uh, community, which again, it's very small and the and, and the the incidents and the uh, hate crimes that we experience in comparison are um, are staggering. And so I, I just want us I want for us to reflect on those things and obviously continue to do our very best to ensure that we continue to uplift the livelihood of uh, my community, the community that I am a part of and that I personally have experienced and lived um, the hate that we experience. Um, uh, Commissioner Farah, I see that you have your hand up. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to acknowledge that, uh, you know, uh, what you said and that we need to all be sensitive to remembering the targeting that happens to your community unnecessarily. And I also want to thank um, Brian for all the work he does and also acknowledge for um, my community, the increase of anti-Semitism that's been happening and my concerns for my community with the election coming and what is happening globally. So I think we we it's a tough time. It's a tough time for a lot of our communities. So thank you for sharing about your community and I want to take knowledge about um, what's happening with the Jewish community right now as well. Thank you so much. Uh, I see uh, Commissioner Levin. Just briefly, because of the alarm, the alarming nature of this data, I want to tell everyone on this commission, I will go anywhere in this state personally. Commission folks, don't worry. If I have to, it'll be on my dime. Someone can get me a couch, that's great. I will go anywhere in the state, whether it's regard to the Asian American community, the Jewish community, the Muslim, I'm already helping various groups now. And I told my partner that I will have to make myself available, knowing in advance how bad this is and it could get worse. So I, I, I want you to know, particularly Vice Chair Salcedo, I will, I will come up to LA, Sacramento, uh, 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 any of any of the uh, the commissioners here, I will to the extent that I don't violate Bagley Keen, 
Um, but to help any of your organizations, or you, if you know of organizations, I will make myself as available as possible. And if we don't have the funds, I will cover it to come to any, any group that is in need throughout the state of California. That is my personal pledge now going forward and when I'm not a commissioner as well. Because a lot of groups don't have this kind of technical assistance to make these points. So any university, any NGO, any advocacy group, I'm, 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 I'm and I'm, I'm working with an in interfaith. Um, it is my pledge to you. And, 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 and Vice Chair Salcido, you are not alone and I will come up anytime uh, to, to, to help a transit team. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Levine. Um, I and I'm sure all of us are grateful uh, for your contributions and for you know being part of um, finding a solution to you know a societal problem that we have. Uh, You're so a thank hero you so to much. Us. You're a hero to us. You're a hero to us, and allyship is so important. It's so important. You are a hero to us, and I am so sorry for some of the things that you have faced, and we're gonna stand together. Thank you, appreciate that, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, any other comments from any of the commissioners before we move into our next, um, into our next agenda item? Um, so any announcements from any of the commissioners that you wanna put forth? I guess if I can start um, and uh, then we can continue with some of uh, the other commissioners. Um, I'd like to make an invitation to uh, not just my fellow commissioners, but to everybody who is watching us and will be watching. Um, uh, the Trans Latino Coalition is celebrating our 15th anniversary of service to our community. And um, this year we're having a, um, uh, during our fashion show, we're having our celebration of our quinceañera. And so I want to extend an invitation to all of you to, if you're able to and willing uh, to come to our uh, celebration of uh, 15th anniversary or quinceañera on November 16th um, at the Pacific Design Center in uh, West Hollywood. Uh, the We're going to have a... Um, a reception at seven o'clock and the show starts right at eight. Uh, so if you, once again, are able and willing, please do come and join us. Uh, there are sponsorship opportunities. Uh, so if any of you know anyone that wants to uh, support our, you know, our efforts of building a new center, um, please, um, do or you know share with your friends um, and uh, so that's my announcement again November 16 Gara's fashion show uh, 7 p.m Pacific Design Center um, and I see Commissioner Choi uh, has a, an announcement um, yeah, thank you, Vice Chair Salcedo. I actually wanted to circle back to um, the subcommittee and community for us and their request. Um, so I can come back to that after everyone does their announcements, but I just wanted to make sure I had an opportunity. I appreciate that. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, Commissioner Damsky, do you have a, an announcement? I do. Thank you, Acting Vice Chair. Um, want to remind everyone that uh, we are in the middle of an election, and in California, we have two propositions on the ballot that are directly related to hate in protected communities. And while our commission cannot tell you how to vote or make recommendations about these um, 
these propositions, I want to call your attention to them so you can look at them for yourselves. The first is Prop 3, which would amend our state constitution to legalize marriage between same-sex couples and interracial couples. The second is Prop 6, which would also amend our state constitution to end indentured servitude in state prisons, which is considered one of the last remnants of slavery. So I just wanted to uh, make a statement that those are up for our consideration and our vote and uh, may be of interest to people both on the commission and who are attending our meeting today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Dembski. Are there any other comments from any of the commissioners or announcements? Okay, uh, yes, Commissioner Levin. Just briefly, uh, we've seen um, a roundup federally of 58 uh, accused involved in white supremacy and other related crimes in the LA area. And we're also seeing some of the first prosecutions just happening this week uh, with regard to uh, an attack that took place uh, at, at UCLA. Uh, and we are also seeing uh, various entities uh, uh, filing uh, either complaints or lawsuits relating to protection uh, from discrimination on college campuses. Just happening now. Oh, and, and if I may, just as a baseball fan, to uh, the Toro of Sonora, uh, as a kid, Having grown up watching Fernando Valenzuela, let me offer my heartfelt uh, uh, gratitude and condolences to uh, the Mexican American community and baseball fans everywhere. We lost uh, a wonderful Californian and uh, 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 an an immigrant far too soon. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Levine. Uh, definitely great loss. Um, anybody else? I think um, that could be a good moment, uh, Commissioner Che, to address your concern. Um, so if uh, before we go into public comment, uh, that is not in the agenda. Do you wanna um, do you wanna reiterate your your question and see how we can? Yes. Um, well, I didn't want to miss an opportunity to offer up any questions that um, we may have, and and thank you both for representing us. Um, so the two questions that I would like to pose, and this does connect back to our subcommittee on policies and best practices is, what are the barriers uh, for your specific community members uh, in seeking services? And I understand that you are hoping to highlight the voices of three specific communities, um, all with potential language and, um, perhaps um, complicated relationships with local law enforcement. Um, and then secondly, um, what are the examples um, of which, and I think you're gonna have NGOs there in which you partnered with government entities and that could be police. Can I interrupt you for one second? Could you repeat the first question again that you had? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so what are the barriers for the, for the community members that you are a part of or represent in seeking uh, support okay. and services. So that may be ser services. Um, and, then, um, and then the second are what are examples, and this is probably for NGOs or perhaps impacted individuals in which um, you worked with local government and this is, um, uh, beyond police, it could include include police, but also other agencies, um, and it could also mean other nonprofits. And so we can learn more more about that. Um, so I really appreciate you posing those questions. They probably were in your 
queue of questions, I imagine. And then the second item is um, uh, with regard to ideas for future forums. Um, I'm wondering if we could have an opportunity at the December meeting to propose ideas. And one thing that would be really helpful because unfortunately I wasn't able to attend all the community forums. If you could share the list um, and the topics. And I believe that there were also, at least for the ones that I suggested, uh, additional comments about topics or a follow-up. For example, I think it's wonderful that we are um, considering doing a second fora on um, uh, that people with disabilities experience with regard to hate and discrimination. Um, so that would be really helpful. Um, uh, and then to have an opportunity to, to think about it and to present at the December 9th. Yeah, I though the ideas for future forums, we definitely have time for you all to think about it and bring that in December. That was more of a, of giving you the opportunity to do that. The questions we just kind of need to know now because we're going to be doing it before the next commission meeting. So yes, for everyone, please take your time, bring those ideas to the next um, commission meeting so then we can start pl planning out for the following year. Thank you both so much. I appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, before I go to you, um, Commissioner Levin and Commissioner Tamsky, um, I, I, I think, uh, an important question to consider is um, to learn from the uh, local communities. How, just a simple question, like how is your relationship with law enforcement? Mm. Do you feel confident that, you know, and the if anything happens in your community, can you, you know, find a way to report or like, what are the limitations of reporting? I think um, something around those lines, um, maybe one, you feel confident, confident reporting or going to the police, right? Um, I think that could, you know, help us understand a little, a little more. Um, I see Commissioner Damsky. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Levin was first, and then Damsky, and then Commissioner Southers. Just, just real quick, uh, the questions I would like to see uh, are, who would you be most likely to report to? And what kind of support uh, is the most urgent, but also what kind of support uh, extended support would would be uh, the the most uh, needed. So uh, who urgent and then going forward. In other words, there there are urgencies with regard to victimizations, and then there are long term uh, issues with regard to support. So so those those are the things I'd like to see. Who would you be most likely to report to? What kind of support? Uh, is needed most immediately, but then on an extended basis, what kind of support uh, is recommended uh, within those uh, impacted communities? Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dubsky. Thank you, Shira. Um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to provide some questions for guiding the conversation. One of the things that um, is pretty much top of mind for me is whether there are any policies that are that would be useful that are not in place that that these communities are feeling a need for. Um, also reflecting a little bit in relation to some of the requirements of Assembly Bill 449, which talks about building trust and relationships with communities prior to there being a need for um, responding to hate acts and hate incidents. Um, you know, the question is, do those community ex organizations exist? Do they already have the relationships with law enforcement? 
do they know about California versus hate and the resources that are available to them there? So it's kind of like knit together some of the things that we've been talking about in the last year. And thank you for that opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Sellers. Yes, thank you. I just want to echo Commissioner Dansky's comments and make sure you all understand if you haven't had a chance to look at the video that she championed, it's as important for the community to see that video as it is law enforcement to see that community, that video. It really yeah. explains those situations and vignettes that are offered in the presentation that are often mistaken for something less than a hate crime. And people don't actually understand it is a hate crime. It may in fact be a hate incident, but in both cases they should be reported. So I'm suggesting that that video be available to everyone so they can learn um, that this is not just about the first responders. This is also about the victims of those crimes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Sellers. Um, so, um, yeah, the video is on YouTube, so it's it, it's available to to everyone. Um, I I think a good idea could be like, I guess for that particular, uh, commission or department to really think about like what is this dissemination process, right? Like how is it that they're going to ensure that they're going to promote it. What are those uh, things in place that they may have to make sure that, you know, it's not just on YouTube uh, and people don't know about it. So like people won't be able to see it or watch it, right? Um, I think they may have an idea just to promote it to law enforcement, but not necessarily to just the, uh, the public in general in general. Uh, that's my assumption, but um, I think it's important for us to, you know, find ways to see how that could happen. Um, I see, did you want to respond, Commissioner Southers? I see your hand up. Yes, again. Commissioner Dampsey was next, but if I could just respond very briefly. We live in a state that probably has some of the most well-known people on the planet. I think we should leverage that in terms of promoting this video. Yes, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dabsky? Thank you. I, I meant to follow up earlier and these these uh, last few comments reminded me that when we started working with the California Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training, we were told that this video would not be available for public view. And I'm really pleased that it is. We were told that it would only be available through their portal for training purposes. So um, I think it's a great tool and a great asset that um, that we can point to in in elevating the work of this commission. And um, and I want to thank Commissioner Southers for always bringing in the idea that we have some pretty pretty well known um, well known people in the world in California who may be ha very interested in helping promote this. It's something the Committee on Recommendations for Law Enforcement hasn't discussed in a while, but we can bring that back to our meeting agendas. And thank you for that idea, Commissioner Southers. Thank you so much. Um, let me, um, I, one of the other things that I do want to mention um, for people to consider um, when you do your uh, community forum or listening session um, in December is maybe we can just ask people a simple question. Um, how do you think we can eliminate hate? And maybe what are the resources needed to eliminate hate? Um, I guess if we have no other um, announcements from any of the commissioners, and thank you so much again, uh, Commissioner Chai, to bringing this up for us to have these questions. Um, so we're now going to move uh, on to our next agenda item, which is public comment on items that are not in the agenda. Um, so, Monica, do we have any public comment on Zoom or email? Uh, 
that is item on items that are not on the agenda. Um, I believe we have comments for the, yeah, for the the item we have. Uh, Sonia Rosas, let me um, have unmuted you. No, I just wanted to say thank you for like uh, promoting uh, Prop Three. We're collaborating with um, that group that's promoting Prop Three, and um, just thank you for to be here in general. And I also want to extend an invitation that uh, we're also, um, you know, having an event uh, on our end on November 9th. So uh, if you could check our website, that'll be great at bnstar.org. Amazing. Um, thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, any other public comment on Zoom or? Yes, we have a comment from Greg Dejir. Greg, I've unmuted you. Thank you. Uh, two points. One is uh, thank you again to for the commission and the department for all your working is in the uh, disability forum. Um, the um it, some of the uh testimony much of the testimony much of the comment uh, pointed to uh the need for action uh and um if you're talking about legislative action in the coming year to avoid having to wait a third year from in uh for for, for no recommendations it would have to be on the december agenda so my my, my um my uh, request is that any um, any action item concerning uh, legislation to be be placed on the agenda for for December for commission uh, approval or disapproval, depending on whether you uh, approve of what the uh, proposal is. Uh, the other is following up on Commissioner Levin's uh, report with particularly about the uh, uh, deserts. Um, the um, Quite a few of the civil rights groups and community groups have made a request to post to um, have a mandatory item in their their um, uh, hate crimes policy that every agency must have a hate crimes coordinator. Uh, 449 will require every agency to have uh, a pretty good uh, hate crimes policy, but getting it actually implemented in the department is, uh, is another matter. That, uh, that this wouldn't require a full-scale hate crimes unit, but would have require that every day have somebody, someone, some officer whose responsibility it is to to uh, to carry out the policy. And so, this is a recommendation I have to the uh, law enforcement uh, subcommittee. That uh, and I will I will send you some information on this. That uh, I hope you can support the um, community group's request that post. Um, mandate that as part of their e-commerce policy. Thank you so much. Uh, any other public comment, Monica, or written public comment? Uh, no public comment on Zoom or on uh, email. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. Um, Narve, do we have any public comment in the room? Uh, no, we do not. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, future agenda items. Any, I guess, public comment for future agenda items? Monica, do we have any comments on Zoom or email public comment? Uh, no. no public comment. Thank you so much. Uh, Narbe, is there any public comment on future agenda items in the room? No, there's none. Thank you so much. Uh, it seems that we have made it to the last of our meeting. Uh, before closing our meeting, I want to thank each and every one of you.
the commissioners who are here, we want to send our love and healing power to our chair, uh, Russell Roybal, um, hoping he gets recovered uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and um, again, thank you so much for the opportunity to participate, uh, leading this meeting. Thank you all so much for your patience and support. Uh, and again, I want to thank you for all of the amazing work that you're all doing um, to make sure that we eliminate the hate, not just in our state, but that we are also uh, set precedents for others to follow. Um, so my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you. Um, if we have no anything else to say, uh, we can. Can I get a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Thank you. Can we get a second? Please don't be afraid. It's okay. I'll second. I'll second. Thank you so much, Commissioner Southerners. Um. Is there any discussion about closing this meeting? Okay, well, I guess uh, I'd like to just say everybody yay and then we go, or do we need to go to a roll call? No need to take a vote. I think um, we can just say that the time of the end of the meeting and then we'll adjourn. Okay, uh, so we adjourned this meeting at 10.57 on this day of October. Um, was it, what's the date today? 23rd. <laughs> the 23rd. I don't even know the dates that I live. Uh, thank you again so much, um, everyone, and our meeting is adjourned. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.